What's up everybody? Welcome to the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews. My name is Brent. If you are a subscriber, I thank you so much for your support. And if you're not a subscriber and you're into whiskey, please consider hitting that subscribe button with a notification bell. That way you'll be notified of new uploads and live streams. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Laphroaig 10. This was requested by Daniel Provost. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you so much for your support. The Laphroaig 10 is a whiskey that me, Jake, and Ryan reviewed previously. And it's kind of one that I kind of wanted to give my own take on. I have, there's several of the whiskeys that me, Jake, and Ryan reviewed together that I would kind of like to just give my own take on. And through this next year, I'm going to be doing that. But on the weeks that I do review a whiskey that's was previously reviewed by me, Jake, and Ryan, I'll upload two reviews that week or live stream. That way, you're still getting a new review every week. Let's get into this before 10. In the early 19th century, two farmers, Donald and Alexander Johnston, leased 1,000 acres of land from the Lord of Isla to rear cattle. The plot of land was called Lafroig, which is thought to mean broad hollow by the bay. This plot of land had a surplus of barley for feeding cattle, but instead of raising cattle, Donald and Alexander chose to produce whiskey because they thought it would be more profitable. So in 1815, they set up their small distillery under D. Johnson and Company. Changing hands many times over the last 200 years, Lafroig has withheld the test of time. The distillery is now owned by Beam Centauri. The Laphroaig 10 is an Isla single malt scotch whiskey that is aged in ex bourbon cask. It has an ABV of 43%, 86 proof with an MSRP of around $45. Let's check out the bottle for a second. The bottling is nothing over the top or extravagant. The cylinder matches the, uh, the, cylinder matches the labeling right here. It says Laphroaig 10 year. This right here is a royal warrant of the Prince of Wales. Laphroaig is the only distillery to carry this royal warrant of the Prince of Wales. It was granted to them in 1994 by Prince Charles when he visited the distillery and was actually so impressed with the distillery, he granted them with the Prince of Wales royal warrant. Pretty cool. On top of the cylinder, it says, like kissing a mermaid that had barbecue for dinner. That tells you a little bit about the richness and peatiness and smokiness of this whiskey. On the cork right here, nothing too fancy. It just says Laphroaig Distillery and it has a pot still on the cork. Pretty simple bottling, nothing extravagant, nothing over the top. With that being said, let's get into the color, nose, and taste of this whiskey. Let's check out the color. Let's coat the glass real quick before we look at the color. That way we can also check the, see how viscous the whiskey is, see how it's coating the glass. The color on this one, Nice light caramel, maybe a straw color to the whiskey. Not super dark. And the viscosity is nice. It's coating the glass very well. Nice legs. The legs are kind of running quickly, not super viscous, but it is a nice oily whiskey. And that's what we want. A nice oily whiskey that coats the mouth well. Once again, the color, a straw looking color, a light caramel and it has nice viscosity on this whiskey. That being said, let's get into the nose. Right away you're getting, I'm getting like a saltiness or a briny note. A little iodine sulfur. Kind of like a lit match that's been put out, maybe an ashy scent. There is also like a meaty, savory scent to the nose. There's definitely some maritime qualities. Like a, it definitely makes you feel like you're by the sea. Definitely a nice salty, maybe in a sea, like a seaweed note also on the nose. There's also a sweetness, like a maybe a honey or vanilla. And the peat on this is very pronounced, strong rich peat and this peat also has some medicinal qualities there's definitely a nice iodine sulfuric note to the whiskey kind of smells like a maybe like a medicine cabinet some rubber very interesting and complex nose this is one that's definitely going to ever change in the glass the, the longer it sits 
the more it's going to be changing. Very complex nose, a lot going on. There's more sweetness as it's opening up in the glass. There's more sweetness coming out. This has been set in the glass probably 15 minutes before I actually went to the nose. There's some nice sweetness like a honey caramel vanilla also on the nose. Once again on the nose, you've got like a briny, ashy note. There's a little bit of savory, meaty note also. Some nice sweetness with like vanilla caramel, some sulfuric properties, and some medicinal properties to the nose. Very nice nose on this whiskey. Let's get into the taste. Cheers. Mm. Very nice texture to the whiskey. Nice velvety, creamy mouthfeel. Finish is probably middle of the row. Interest was sweet. Finish is definitely ashy. A little bit of vanilla on the front of the palate. I like got on the first sip. And it's ending in like a medicinal, iodine-ish, ashy note. Nice first sip. Let's go in for another. Cheers. Right on the front of the palate on the second sip, sweetness, caramel, vanilla, a little bit of nuttiness, very mouth coating whiskey. Second sip is bringing a lot more out because my palate is acclimated to the whiskey now. Mid palate, you're getting a little bit of brininess, a savory, meaty note, a little bit of salt. And on the finish, you're getting like a medicinal iodine-ish rubbery note and a little bit of ash. Very, very nice second sip. Very complex pour that's ever-changing in the glass. Let's go in for another sip. Cheers. Once again, the, the whiskey has a very, very nice mouthfeel. Creamy, almost velvety mouthfeel. Entrance is sweet, caramel, vanilla with a little bit of salt, maybe a nuttiness. Mid palate, you're getting a little bit of a briny, savory, meaty note. And it's tapering off on the finish in like an ashy, medicinal quality. Like a sulfur, iodine-ish also on the finish. Very nice third sip. Let's get into my final thoughts. My final thoughts on the Lafroy 10. Excellent pour, guys. If you're into peated scotch, it, it's definitely a great, great pour. Very complex whiskey. It's ever-changing. Nice sweetness. I will say this. It does have more medicinal qualities than some of your other peated offerings, such as Art bag and so on, but it's very medicinal. There's a lot of medicinal quality. So if you are in not into the medicinal thing, I, you might want to try to go a different route on your peated scotch. But do I think it's worth the money? Absolutely, great value, forty-five to fifty-five bucks. Very complex pour, offers sweetness, richness, great mouthfeel. I really love this, guys. It's a great pour. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. If you are a subscriber, once again, I thank you so much for your support. And if you're not a subscriber, hey, subscribe. Until next time, guys, cheers. Cheers.